Hello everyone, today I'm gonna try to solve, try to explain the solution of the homework 3 that I will post on canvas. I'm gonna explain only problem number 1 because problem number 2 was already solved in class. So if you want to know how to solve problem 2, you can go to the two videos on March 6 and March 8. The, so the focus of, to, of today is just problem number one. In problem number one, you need to solve this um, eigenvalue problem. This eigenvalue problem has a characteristic equation of the type x squared plus lambda is zero. As we discussed in class, we have three cases to consider. Lambda is smaller than zero, lambda is zero, and lambda is greater than zero. Now the first case, lambda is negative. When lambda is negative, this equation has two roots. The first one is minus the square root of the absolute, absolute of lambda, and the second one is the square root of the absolute uh, value of lambda. That gives you two solutions. U1 is this guy, which is exponential of R1x, U2 is this guy, which is R2 exponential, uh, exponential of R2x. Now the solution, U will be a linear combination of U1 and U2. So you want to have to find C1 such uh, and C2 such that U is C1, U1 plus C2, U2. How do you find C1 and C2? You find C1 and C2 by using the boundary condition. The first one, the first one is u1 is 0 because u1 is 0 you can replace zero, uh, 1 into u so when you replace 1 here you're gonna have exponential of minus square root of lambda when you replace 1 here you're gonna have exponential of square root of lambda this gives you 0 is c1 times this term and c2 times this term basically this means that you only replace 1 into u Right, the second one will be u prime at zero plus u is zero. What you do is you replace zero into u and zero into u prime. So after I replace zero into u and u prime, I get c1 plus c2. This is u zero. Minus square root of lambda c1 plus c2 square root of lambda. So this is u1. You, uh, this is u prime at zero. Right. You have an equation on c1 and c2. You can try to solve c1 in terms of c2. So what I do is I group c1 and minus the square root of uh, lambda, c1, and I get c1, 1 minus square root of the absolute value of lambda, and I group c2 and uh, C2 square root of the absolute value of lambda and I get C2 1 plus uh, the square root of the absolute value of lambda. I solve this equation and I find C1 will be C2 1 plus square root of the absolute value of lambda dividing by minus this constant. Basically, this is what I get. After I solve C1, I still have the first equation here. Right, so I'm gonna replace this quantity that I just found here into this equation. After I replace everything into this equation, I get zero is c1 exponential of minus the square root of the absolute value of lambda plus c2 uh, exp exponential of uh, uh, the square root of the absolute value of lambda, which is this equation. So I replace c2 there, uh, c1 there, and I get this whole equation. So here I have C2 and C2. So I put C2 as, as a common factor. C2 times something is zero, which means that C2 is zero. C2 is zero, I replace it here, and I get C1 is also zero. So in this case, you have C1 and C2, they are both zero in here. So U is zero, you get a trivial solution. Now, the next case will be lambda is zero, when lambda is 0, u second is 0, so we know in class that this equation 
has a solution which is u is a, a x plus b. Now you replace into the first boundary condition u1 is 0. You replace 1 here, you have 0 is a plus b, which implies b is minus a. You also have the second boundary condition, which is u0 plus u prime of 0 is 0. u0 will be b, u prime is 0 will be a, so you have b plus a is 0. In general, you only have b is minus a. You replace b to be minus a into this equation, you get ux is a minus a times x minus 1. Now, which means that when lambda is 0, you have one eigenvector or eigenfunction x minus 1. Second case, when lambda is positive, when lambda is positive, you find two roots i square root of lambda and minus i square root of lambda that give you two uh, uh, solutions, cosinus of square root of lambda x and sinus of square root of lambda x. You take the linear combination of the two, you replace it to the boundary condition at 0, u0 plus u prime at 0 is 0, u0 is c1 cosinus of 0 plus c2 sinus of 0, u prime at 0 is minus c1 square root of lambda sinus of 0 plus c2 square root of lambda cosinus of 0. This gives you c1 plus c2 square root of lambda is 0 because sinus is 0, sinus is 0, cosinus is 1, cosinus here is 1. So this inequality give you c1 is minus c2 square root of lambda. You have u1 is 0, but you know in advance that c1 is minus uh, c2 square root of lambda. u1 is 0 means that c1 cosinus square root of lambda plus c2 sinus of square root of lambda is 0. You replace this inside this equation. You get minus c2 square root of lambda cosinus square root of lambda because c1 is minus c2 square root of lambda, right? You replace this inequality into here. And and this term is the same. The c2 square root of lambda will be the same with c2 square root of lambda. So what you get is square root of lambda minus th uh, the tan of square root of lambda is zero. Now the eigenvalue will be lambda is theta square where theta solve the equation. Theta n is tan of theta n. So n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The eigen function will be c1 cosine square root of lambda plus c2 sinus of square root of lambda, but you know that c1 is minus c2 square root of lambda, so you get, you replace it here, so you have minus c2 square root of lambda cosine square root of lambda plus sine square root of lambda. Square root of lambda will be theta, so this is c2 minus theta cosine theta nx plus sine theta nx. You can remove the constant c2, so the eigen function will be sine theta nx minus theta n cosinus nx, uh, cosinus theta nx. Thank you.